Welcome to That's No Class. I'm Brian Baruman. And I'm Morgan Darian. Welcome back to the home of class, where we talk about the most interesting and funny things happening in the news and in our lives, try to figure out how to live classy, and call out no class moves. This week in news, Brian tells us about the newest trend in body art. I cover aircraft Airbus A321. We celebrate 50 episodes with a little wine and cheese about our show and present the top moments from the past 50 eps. And as always, we end with our no-class pigs. Here we are, friend. Episode 50. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm proud to say I'm 50 years old. I'm not one of those gals who's afraid to hide her age, unlike some other gals. And I like to kick, stretch, and kick. I'm 50. 50 years old. <laughs> awesome. We, Heck yeah. pr- we promised it for you. It's here. The all class episode. <laughs> can't believe it. If you're listening to this episode, you're one of our regular listeners. I can't believe I'm even saying that, friend. Our listeners. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about you guys this week. This episode is a really big deal for me, and I won't say personally because that's an oversimplification of what this is. Mm. And all you coming back and listening to Morgan and I are the listeners that I've always wanted. Some would say before we found you guys that this show wouldn't work, that there's no audience for the kind of thing Morgan and I do here. What's our show even about? (laughs) But you guys get it, and you know it's about talking to each other. And not just Morgan and I, all of us, listening to each other's stories, having a laugh, oftentimes talking about very real stuff in our lives and in the lives of the people we know and our listeners sharing with us, talking about goodness, something positive, and not positive and empty, positive and meaningful. I am regularly stunned by you all and the things you tell us the show makes you feel. I wanted a show that was about and for good people. I knew you were all out there. And when you tell us something you heard us talk about that made you feel something or laugh or simply enjoyed enough to keep coming back, I am truly humbled and honored. This is the thing I've always wanted to make to put my name on and say, the world is good and here they are. So thank you guys so much for being here. We're celebrating the show and we're celebrating you. Thanks for being a part of this. We've got a show to get to now. So (laughs) as always, first, let's get to some news. Now here's the news. Okay, I thought this one might be great for us to do because you know, 50 episodes, we're legit now. Uh You know QR codes? Yeah. So did you know that Spotify has its own form of the QR code? No, but for people who don't know, just in case. I'm explaining. Okay. So it looks like a mix. If Everyone knows what a QR code is by now. Well, I don't know. Yeah. If the square does. thing with the crazy looking Well, yeah, I guess COVID did that to us. Yeah, the you thing you scan, scan with the for, menu. For menus. Yeah, menus <laughs> and all that stuff. So Spotify <laughs> has its own form of it, and it looks kind of like a barcode. Okay. It's but the it's kind of rounder, but okay. it's still it's a bunch of lines that are of different heights. <laughs> and if you hold it up with your phone, it'll open up a song or okay. something and you can share it, you can take a picture of it. It's a way that they try to get people to share it. Like, oh, just scan this and you can hear right. music and stuff like that. Yeah. So we have our own Spotify code. Did oh, you heck know that? yeah, we do. We do because we're on Spotify and have been since the <laughs> beginning of the show. Scan that and you can listen to our show. Nice. Uh, but this is news to me. People are getting Spotify codes tattooed on themselves. I saw this in the Wall Street what? Journal. The people they interviewed aren't getting them for deeply meaningful songs to them. They're getting them of songs that are like ironic. <gasps> One person has ACDC's Thunderstruck, and they say it's perfect for a drinking game because you take a drink every oh, time they say thunder. We which did is that at a bachelorette a party lot. I went to. Did you? To. Really? Yeah. There you go. Uh, and I'm sure there's a lot we could talk about <laughs> about the meaninglessness of that kind of tattoo and how That's people amazing. nowadays just do stuff like this just to laugh about it. But here's the funny thing about this story. A bunch of these tattoos don't work when you try to scan them. No. Uh... <laughs> and there are two big reasons. The Spotify logo with the three curved lines in a circle seems to be a crucial part of the scan. And Uh some people aren't getting that (gasps) in the scan. They're just getting the barcode and no logo. And it's part of it. And it doesn't work. (laughs) So they do this whole thing and it doesn't work. And then the other reason is as time passes, like with any tattoo, (laughs) the lines get fuzzy or skin sags or the tattoo warps a little bit. And then... It doesn't scan either. (laughs) Amazing. And the article made some really interesting points and it really made (laughs) me think because it seems wild to do something so permanent. Yeah. Like it's so Spotify specific because who knows how long Spotify is going to be around. But it seems like a lot of people just don't care. And they think that 
it's cool because Spotify might be this moment in time that they look back on in the future and they're saying, man, remember when I used to listen to Spotify and I don't anymore? Does that seem crazy? <laughs> yeah, that's like, what if we got like MySpace tattooed on us? We'd be like, oh, what losers we were. <laughs> <laughs> what I wonder about, though, is if people, I feel like we've kind of moved into this. MySpace was a little too early. Yeah. So we might be into this era where like internet nostalgia is possible okay. and everything is up for grabs and it's okay and nothing okay. is too lame. I don't really know. Oh but my gosh. the real question is, friend, are we going to get tattoos of our Spotify code? No. Is that nuts? That's insane. <laughs> it, it never occurred to me that one day we would be a unique artist on Spotify and that what we would have our like? own code. Does it's it just, have the S oh, in Spotify? I have a picture of it. Okay. <laughs> pause for this picture so I can see it. I'll put it up on the video. Is it cute? <laughs> I mean, it looks like any other Spotify code. So this is what ours what? looks like. Okay. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, okay. It's basically a barcode. Yeah, it looks more like a um, a voice message. Yeah, it looks like an audio wave, a mix between an yes. audio wave file and a barcode. Yes. Is what it is. That's kind of cool. But anyway, that's ours. Never, Nobody else has that. I love it. That's just us. All right. All right, everyone. Let's get them. Let's all get them. Let's all get them. No, you guys don't get them. We, we can do something All of us will like get that. them. <laughs> Please don't do that. That's not what I want. Okay. <laughs> all right, what do you got? Okay, I wanted my news story to be epic because it's episode 50, but it also feels right that it's completely not epic and totally random because, you know, that's my steez. That is your steez. So <laughs> NVR came through for me this week. They give us a story that is the best case scenario of my nightmare of nightmares. Okay. A small aircraft, well, actually, it's like 170 seats. I think that's small. That's No, that's It's large. regular? That's okay, whatever. Large. You know what? Whatever. Okay. Already wrong. All right. Departed from London. It was only carrying a small crew for some reason, like 11 people besides the plane flyers. It was it was just like people who work on the aircrafts. Okay. Our pilot, uh, um, yeah. The crew is all sitting in the front half of the aircraft, and some of them are like, man, it's really loud in here, louder than it usually is. And they're noticing that it's colder than usual, too. So one crew member walks towards the back of the plane, and he sees a window seal flapping in the wind. At this point, there are 13,000 feet in the air. The guy who discovered it describes the noise as loud enough to damage your hearing. <laughs> <laughs> they keep climbing, and at 14,000 feet, they stop their ascent and reduce speed. The co-pilot goes back to check it out, and they're like, uh, we need to turn around immediately. I'm like, how did it take another 1,000 feet and the co-pilot's eyes for you to decide this? This is a code red, people. Turn around once it's discovered. They discover it. They Oh, then they discover once it lands that not only has one, one window been damaged, but a second window pane is missing, a third is dislodged, and a fourth is protruding slightly from its frame. How did this happen? The plane had been used for filming, and they believe the production lights, which are crazy hot, melted stuff and ruined the windows. Oh, my God. But my issue is the inspection crew, because <laughs> I know some young people back in the day that did that job. And let me tell you, just knowing who those guys were, I'm a bit sus on flying ever again when I realized basically high schoolers are doing this ish. No. I, I There is a thing I heard on NPR once that was uh -huh. about the... Sh I mean, shoddy is too good of a word to describe how airplane inspections are done and how companies regularly go to other it's countries crazy. because the regulations oh and they get them inspected in other <gasps> countries. Like, no, it's terrifying. I, It's terrifying, and I don't want to put that in people's minds, but terrifying. scary. scary. It, I am terrified, but you know as soon as I get a chance, I'm going to fly somewhere for vacay with you. I mean, yeah, we're flying. We're still we're going. soon. NPR also cites another case where a woman was partially sucked out of a plane window. I've heard of this. That's horrendous. <laughs> Why do these things happen? Like, do better. Because exactly what we're talking about. Oh, my God. Who's in charge of those inspections? Hey. Ooh, who we inspects don't know. the inspectors? <laughs> who inspects <laughs> Crazy. <them>. Insane. <laughs> do we have any personal news? Okay, this year for tea day, we're having ham, potatoes, and pie because Lily has an aversion to vegetables. So we're joining her in eating only the important parts of the holiday meal, the carbs, the sugars, and the meats. Yeah. I have never tried this until now, but I'm seeing the value in it because if you're going to be 
full, it might as well be from the favorites, That's right? what we're saying. If we're doing this whole song and dance of filling ourselves up, it might as well. If we're already going to be eating too many calories and too many of the yes. wrong thing, you might as well just go full into it. You might as well just have pie. Yeah. <laughs> So I will miss my family's recipes because we have some wild ones, but <laughs> you you're going to make pie this year. So everyone can be jealous because Brian has got this down. Cast iron, baby. I told you guys, it's the year of food. I'm really up in my game Heck this yeah, year. Heck yeah, you are. I see you watching those uh, those chef tables. Yeah, France. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. When we come back, our favorite segment with food and drink, and then your top moments from the show picked by you guys. So thanks so much for being here. We love having you. We'll be right back. <laughs> Brian and I, we love us some wine and cheese. If every Thanksgiving roast was accompanied by a whimsical herbed goat and a smooth Pinot Noir, we'd be in heaven. In fact, I'm planning our next holiday meal in my head right now. So here's our segment called Wine and Cheese, or Wahine and Cheese. Can you hear the H? Wahine. Because we're about to share something we're annoyed with but probably shouldn't complain about, and something that's too dumb cheesy and shouldn't be said out loud because, ew, gross, that's too nice. And while we share with you, we're going to drink and snack and pretend we're vineyard owners in Napa looking out at a good year of grapes. And this week, it's show-themed, so we can only whine or cheese about something related to That's No Class podcast. Cheers, my friend. What are we trying today? Cheers, friend. Well, Cheers. today, to celebrate 50 episodes, we figured we'd go fancy, and we're having bubbles. <laughs> okay. Uh, this week, we're drinking the Tobin James Dreamweaver. It's a California mm. champagne we tried for the first time on vacation in Morro Bay. It's a very rich and sweet sparkling wine. Basically, Ooh. no dryness at all. Mm -hmm. It's like sweet butter, yes? Yeah, it is. It is. Oh, it is like sweet butter. <laughs> <laughs> and then for cheese, uh, we are having a reading, mm -hmm. which appears to be some form of cheddar. Okay. And then a fromager dauphinois black truffle. <laughs> Which has no structure whatsoever and just seems to be I'm just gonna, like, goo. I'm going to get this little. Okay. You do that. How is that? It smells crazy. Oh, my God. It smells so bad. I think that's the worst cheese I've ever had. I wonder if it's actually bad. Oh. Like it went bad. Should I try it? Only if you want to. I'll try it. I'll try it just to know. Oh. I mean, you already... Don't get that cheese. Blech. Oh, my God. You just ate such a big piece. Mm. It ain't right. It's not that bad. Are you kidding me? It's not great, but it's not that You're bad. It's so wild. What's the other one? The reading is just like a dusty cheddar. You know, like a little dust on my cheddar. You told me not to talk while chewing, so I'm not. Yeah, don't do it. Okay, well then you gotta talk. Turn away. Tell me your wine. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. My wine. A show wine is hard to come up with. <laughs> I mean, there's the little things, like just wanting one more day in the week so that our only day together isn't a half of a day of show stuff, but <laughs> honestly, it's super fun to make. So that's, it can't really be a true wine. I think I finally landed on this. I have a mush mouth and sometimes <laughs> I don't enunciate the best. So my wine is that we don't have a tiny time machine that I can use while I'm editing so that I can go back and fix my messed up words that I squish together. I mentioned this to my parents and they were like, Oh, yeah. Sometimes we look at each other and we're like, what did she say? And then they shrug and carry on. I'm like, how long has this been going on? No one told me. I, I finally started because like, I, <laughs> I can understand myself. I think I just did it right now. And I don't even know if I did it. It's possible. I'm like, <laughs> I do the same thing. I'm it, on, no, I'm a, you don't. I'm a professional on air. I get paid to talk on air. And there are certain phrases that I say so often that now I just blur them together. Mm. One phrase that I say all the time is... Um, Let's take a look at let's take a look at the traffic, and this is how I say it. Let's take a look at the traffic. And it's like really just, fast. Just blast it out. Like <laughs> I am so not interested in it that like, I'm just more nah. traffic. <laughs> so I get you. I get Whatever. You. Anyway, it's a I solid don't, wine. I don't ever hear you do this fully, like me. <laughs> like mine turns into a different word. <laughs> Yours is a little. <laughs> and lately, I'm like, I don't know what I said, and I know what I said. Switters. This is a callback to an old one when Morgan Sweaters. called it Sweaters. You're so crazy. Okay, what's your wine? Okay, 
My wine. I wish more people called the voicemail. Oh, I knew I you were going to pick I that. I think it's such a cool thing. And I realize <laughs> it's definitely because I'm a broadcast journalist and sound bites are what I work with every day. Mm. And not everybody loves them as much as I do. And I love and appreciate the people that call us that do and leave us a voicemail. I uh-huh. love you guys so much. <laughs> I just wish we had so many more. And I, I wish that we had so many that we wouldn't even know what to do with them all. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's my wine. I but get it. What I realize about our risk, our. <laughs> There, I just did it. Oh, you did. What I realized about our listeners this week as we were asking for their favorite moments, mm-hmm. which we're going to do soon, guys, is they're very nice, but they're very shy. Yeah. And it's like when you and I started dating <laughs> and you would kind of just smile and listen to me talk and not say much about yourself. That's okay. our listeners. All right. So thank you guys so much for listening to us. I just love hearing about you guys, too. Aww. <laughs> That's a good way to compare it. That's funny. I love it. Okay. Cheese. So my cheese, I'm trying to make sure my cheese is not too generic. For example, I just love making the show or I just love our listeners, both of which I definitely do love. (laughs) But I'm trying to focus in on the soul of what a cheese pick should be. (laughs) So here's my cheese. My absolute favorite part about making this show and the reason I keep keep coming back is that it's my most favorite thing to make you laugh. (laughs) It's always my ultimate goal, and it's such a damn win when I do. You're my audience of one, and even if no one liked our show ever, this would all be worth it. To spend time with you, to get to know you in unorthodox ways, and above all, have the opportunity to make you laugh. This will be true until we climb that final mountain, my guy. (laughs) And I'm crying. And And she's crying. You brought it on at the beginning, and I was like, "Oh no!" Yeah, you were. I saw it. I was like, "Oh no!" And it's you coming had kept in early. crying even like a minute after it was over. <laughs> you were still in tears, and I was like, "Oh shit!" This went on a little too long. I think you're so cute, Brad. You make me laugh. That's a cheese. All, I mean, that's a real. Morgan cheese. makes me laugh every single day outside of the show. <laughs> she makes me laugh more than anybody in the world. Like always, making me laugh. You're the best. I'm trying. You're great. <laughs> You're Just, trying. I'm a one-woman show over here. You are. Whole I, I appreciate the show that's always on. <laughs> What's yours? Okay. My cheese happened about two weeks ago right after we had put out the episode with your friend who let us tell her story about her wedding and her dad not showing up. Oh, yeah. Because behind the scenes, guys, we weren't sure whether she would be okay telling that story. But she listens to our show and she said that she trusted us mm-hmm. to tell it with sensitivity and humor, as she said, the way we do. <laughs> and as a journalist and as a person, I take that responsibility seriously. And after she heard it, she told us she loved how we did it and it helped her process that day herself, mm. which is something she said she hadn't really done before hearing our episode. Yeah. And about a week later, one of our listeners reached out to us telling us she loved that story, that it made her laugh and it made yeah. her feel good about herself and better that everyone has crazy family things that happen to them too. Yeah. And that she loves hearing real stories like that. And it's just such an honor to be able to do something like that. Mm -hmm. And only our show does it. (laughs) And I'm proud of it. And I love our listeners. I love that. Love, love, love. So much and more love. love. This There's too much What's love. What's happening in episode <laughs> No, 50. that's really cool. Very cool. Yeah, that was a favorite moment for sure. <laughs> well, when we come back, we're going to have a look back at the show from you guys. And then we've got, of course, your no class picks. We can't not do that even on episode 50. Have Stay to. with us. <laughs> Welcome back. We've been asking all of you for the last couple weeks to tell us your favorite moments from the last 50 episodes, and you guys did not disappoint. I've said it before, but what I love about our show is how many different segments and topics and (laughs) things we do, and the list of stuff we got from our listeners is all over the place. So here's a collection of your top 10 favorite moments from That's No Class. (laughs) At number 10, Morgan's Homemade Eye Drops (laughs) from episode 43. Listeners stunned, <laughs> laughed, thought it was insane <laughs> that I would pour something made by you at home, probably in a bowl, from various house- household items into my eyeballs. Yep. So. Used them for years. 
legit pick. That's so funny. Okay, number nine. Starting in episode 13, Brian related a news segment about Ketchup Boat Guy, a man who had gotten stranded at sea and survived on ketchup. Then we received an anonymous email from ketchupboatguy at gmail.com detailing our whole show and, like, asking for help. The real Ketchup Boat Guy has yet to reveal themselves. The mystery continues. Still out there, Ketchup Boat Guy. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? (laughs) Okay. Number eight. Morgan crying at the Oscars. (laughs) From episode 30. That episode, we broke down the Oscar show, and there were a lot of emotional speeches that we played, and Morgan was just losing it. Dreams are something you have to believe in. I almost gave up on mine. To all of you out there, please keep your dreams alive. Yep, Morgan's Morgan's losing it. Morgan is just crying (laughs) with all of these bites. That's how it was when we watched the show. We were all like, (laughs) Oh my gosh, I just love that speech. (laughs) It was a great speech. He was Dreams. (laughs) (laughs) I know yeah, I love him. Love this. So good. Love that movie. Okay. Number seven. Uh, From episode 37, Our Road Trip with Lily, we outlined this episode in chapter form, driving Lily up to San Francisco, dropping her off at college. She left us with some sage advice before we parted ways. Then we rushed to San Tung for our final dinner together. The world is your wing, Lily said. No, Lily, (laughs) the world is your wing. Uh, I love that. Yeah, one, one listener That'll saying, be our next shirt. Yeah, the <laughs> world is your wing. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, one listener saying that that was like their favorite quote from the show, it. and that it just sticks in their head. That's awesome. The world, the world is, your, is wing. your wing. <laughs> Lily's wisdom. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay, uh, number six. The man on the street when we were at the pier talking about should you ask? Is it okay to ask for money? After an event, in this case, it was a birthday party that Lily had gone to. Is it cool to say, hey, by the way, as you're walking them out, is it 20 bucks? You got 20 bucks. (laughs) And the listener said that the overwhelming emotion, which every person that we talked to had (laughs) when saying how they do not agree at all with this and that this is no class and insane, really stuck with them and they were laughing really loud the whole time. That's awesome. It made them crack up. <laughs> that was one of those debates where there wasn't like a single person that disagreed. The other side? No. Yeah, there was not a single one. <laughs> there was not. <laughs> okay. Number four. Or no, wait. Number, number five. five. Someone loves when we laugh during the transitions. <laughs> I love that because I can't help it. I love that too because... The podcast that I listen to, uh-huh. I just love stuff that's unscripted. Like, yeah. You know. Some of our best moments happen randomly and we're like, oops, oh well, we're leaving it in. Yeah, we're leaving it in. <laughs> it's cool. We get to choose. I like that. Okay, number four, Brian running his 100-meter race from episode 38, in which I relate a news story about a woman who was entered into a professional race despite not being able to run at an elite level. I don't know what I wrote here, but anyway, she can't run fast. She can't run fast. We we still have to share the video I made of Brian testing himself to see if he could beat her time. Um, yeah. <laughs> the video of this race is amazing for many reasons. First, this person is so slow that she falls behind the camera. I can smoke that woman. <laughs> And I did. Yeah, you did. You did I so did. well. Smoked her. I got to post that video. I totally forgot to post it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number three. We're moving into the top three now. Damn. Number three, it's actually a segment. Okay, love that it. That we do. For Young. Definitely right. a fan favorite. Multiple people saying if Lily's on, it's always going to be their favorite thing. I love it. They love that she drops knowledge on what's happening <laughs> in the Gen Z world. <laughs> I have very much experience in scrolling social media for hours. Girls dinner. Girl oh. dinner. Girl dinner. Girl dinner. <laughs> if you Melon doesn't like it, Melon is not liking what she be smelling. And Finn's Finn doesn't like it. It's like Finn said, throw it in the bin. Real big with it. Like, oh hey everyone, check out my camp. It's like Check out my camp. I, I used that, that wrong. No. There we go. See, I don't understand. I don't understand. I'm, I'm off. 
But I yeah, love it. Listeners say they love Lily's personality, her sense of humor, and you know she can make stuff that's really so far outside of a lot of our daily yeah. experience. Don't know any of those words. <laughs> Frame it. She, yeah, she's coming back soon. I can't wait. She will be back soon. Love it. Okay, from episode sixteen, our interview with your grandma Lita, in which she teaches us how to make biscuits. Mm-hmm. You know, Jim says he wants biscuits, and why heck, I knock them out in two seconds. Many of these things I've had as long as, because they were in my hope chest. So he would give you, it's an actual chest. Yeah, big. I big. love that. Okay. <laughs> that was so cool. Chest. And then your interview with your dad, Jose, the godfather of class, shedding some light on what it means to have class. I know, some you know. people are little, without any any class or any style or whatever you want to call them, you know. Style, I like that. Got no style. No style. Some, some it sounds a little better. <laughs> or, <laughs> it's a little softer to let you to let you know you're a cheap person around. <laughs> that was one of my favorite things we've done. I, I that love was really fun. The interviews. Yeah, I mean, if you, we need to do another one soon. We, we haven't. I have a list of people that I would like really? to interview. Not necessarily oh. even people that we know, mm-hmm. but it would be cool to revisit the people that we know. But I yeah, do, we got to do some more. I do have, I do have people. It's in the works, everybody. It's All in right, the works. Cool. I would love to do it. It's the up and coming. Up and in the coming. next fifty. That's right. That's right. Okay. Right, number one. Number one. Any guesses, anybody? I kind of Anybody? Guessed. Even though most of the people picked it? A, okay. a large majority of the people. Morgan's story of getting hit by a car from episode 12. By far, oh most God. people saying this was their favorite moment we've ever done. It was a complete surprise when it happened in the episode. Morgan just threw it in as a no-class pick and ended up being the thing that everybody loved the most. A man hit me in a Ralph's parking lot a couple years ago. Like, full hit. My body went onto the hood of his car. My groceries (laughs) fell on the ground. So he hits me, rolls down his window, and yells, It's dark. No one can see you. I'm too too shocked to respond. He backs up, moves onto another space, parks, and goes into the grocery store. Damn, no. This is an extreme example. No regrets, huh? Yeah, nothing. Just like, that's on you. Went to go get his groceries. (laughs) It's dark, homie. I was like, I was like, my body is, has been hit. (laughs) (laughs) I remember that moment like it was yesterday. Getting hit? Yeah, I'll never forget it. Oh my God. My brain, I was like, I was like, roll, roll so your feet aren't swept. In the I don't moment, know. You're yeah, like, about why it, huh? does my brain say that to me? That's good. I was so That's scared of my feet getting like it under, under the, the car. car. I don't know why. That's so weird. I was like, get on top of the car somehow. <laughs> Maybe that makes sense. like uh, just run into the car, <laughs> slam it, body slam it. That's what my brain tells me to do That's in these so moments. Crazy. <laughs> Fight the car. Good call. Everyone, thanks so much for making that number one. You're right. That was by far the best moment that we've ever had on the show. Thanks to you. So, oh my gosh. So awesome. I love it. Uh, we do have an honorable mention from our listener, Cambry, who said she's listened to every single one of our episodes available on Spotify. Good God, Cambry. Thank you so much. Oh my thank gosh. you. Thank you. She's the best. And uh, by the way, if you're missing out on some of those earlier episodes, which she said she was, they are also on YouTube. True. You can go back to episode seven, I believe, on YouTube. But oh, anyway, you might be right. Okay. She said to us, she doesn't have a specific memory to share, okay. but she thought instead she would share with us and our listeners some valuable information about Costco that everyone should know. <laughs> Did you know that there are various ways to shop at Costco without having a membership? Here are three you might not know. <laughs> Number one, the pharmacy. What? Oh, you, you can, can use go it in without? And apparently so. <gasps> Number two, purchasing alcohol. What? She says, don't sleep on this one for the holidays. However, yeah. it's only applicable in certain states. California, one of them. Arizona, oh. another one. Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Hawaii, Indiana, Kentucky, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, New York, Texas, and Vermont. According to Lish.com. I love that you cited that, Cambry. Amazing. Thank you so much. She's nothing if not efficient. She is. Uh, and organized. Then, and then number three, this is a little twist, gift cards. If you have a friend with a membership, they buy a gift card and they give it to you. You can shop in the store, and you can buy more than just the $10. The gift card is just a gateway allowing you in (laughs) to buy more. So you could, yeah. 
Yeah. You could give it to a friend who doesn't have a Costco membership yeah. and say, hey, you want to go shop at Costco once? Or you could just ask someone, hey, can you buy me a $5 gift card for Costco? She says $10 minimum. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay. I'll give you $10. For the gift card. And she says, congrats again on 50 episodes. Here's to 50 more and beyond. Thank you, Cambry. See, this is why I love our show. Yeah. Because I can do whatever I want. And I love that. (laughs) And I know that you guys love that. And if she wants to throw out Costco advice, I'm going to take it and I'm going to pass it on to all the (laughs) listeners. So thank you, everyone. Thank you guys so much for freaking reaching out to us and telling us your favorite moments. Oh, my God. It's incredible. Amazing. Amazing. We love you. Thank you guys so much. We love you. Oh, my God. All right. When we come back, it is that time. No class picks of the week. Stay with us. It's time to wind down the show here, bring it to a close the only proper way with our no class picks of the week. You're just a jealous, no class, lazy bum. No class pick. Guys, we're, we're an unforeseen side effect of the all class episode. For the audio listeners, I'm wearing a full suit and Morgan is wearing a formal dress. This is and uh, we are sweating. We're dying mistake. in the studio. It was a mistake. I mean, we look great. <laughs> look awesome but man it is hot as crap in here and we're both sweating and we're like we need to finish this episode and get out of the studio out of here okay so (laughs) this week we got a call on the voicemail from our listener jessica with her no class pick of the week hi friends it's your best bud jessica i have my no class pick of the week um i was at costco the other day when it was raining like pouring rain okay it's dark outside because it's after 5 p.m it's like pitch black outside it's raining i cannot see anything and i usually park a little farther so i don't have to deal with all of the cars and the nightmare of finding a parking spot so i started to park closer i see somebody pulling out of a spot and i'm like great i'm gonna park there and then some guy on the other side drives through both spots and takes my freaking spot and i was very upset i pulled forward I look at him. I throw my hands up in disapproval. It makes me so upset when people do that. That's the one thing in life I always try not to do is drive through parking spots. Super no class. Made me very angry. Um, love you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. Okay. Bye. Stay classy. We love you too. Thank you so much, Jessica. That was oh awesome. Oh my gosh. Dude, it didn't even occur to me that people would Pulling do that. So, that's so rude. That's Cutting in on somebody in the same lane and like speeding up and cutting yeah. in is one thing. That's like, this is low down. That's like, ha ha, tricked ya. But that's only possible. She did the, what are you doing? Yeah, I know you're picturing the hands up. Yeah. Yeah. She's nice. You have a lot to. of people be throwing fingers. Someone cut us off once, smiled at us, and went like around us into a spot while we were waiting for someone to back out. Something about Costco, man. Man, they're ruthless Something over there. Something about like, it's dog eat dog out here. Yes. Sorry about that incredibly no class. I wish I was there so I could be your friend. Do what you do? Two against one. When things happen to you? Yeah. (laughs) Get them. Get them. Okay. All right, what do you got? Whenever Thanksgiving rolls around, I get all this nostalgic, and every childhood memory starts to overwhelm my brain. So I'm doing a class throwback this week. Actually, it's a no class pairing. I was no class, and my sister was all class. Sibling squabbles are never ending when you're little. Anyone can attest to the yelling, arguing, insults, bossiness, etc. Normally, Will- Willa and I were pros at tattling on each other or trying to one up each other. I don't remember what she said to me that day in our childhood kitchen, but it pissed me off so much that the glass of rice milk in my hand almost acted on its own as I flung rice milk directly into her face. <laughs> she sputtered in surprise, blinked. I immediately regretted it, and I felt so bad because she didn't cry or anything. And then she didn't tell mom or dad. My Whoa, mind was that's blown. That's scary. That's way more scary. Is it? Yeah. No. Yeah, no. That was the day she's... she became my bestie for life. Really? L-I-Y-F-E. Nah, she's saving that up until you were like 75 in the nursing home, and she's no, going to chuck not. a glass of rice milk in your face, I guarantee and she's she... going to be like, I never forgot. No, she's not. That's what's She is happen. like not even going to remember this until I say it right now. Oh, she thinks about it on You're a weekly so basis. Crazy. I bet you. <laughs> 
So anyway, thanks for being on class, Willa. And here's a too late apology for throwing that rice milk your way. Wow. You're apologizing <laughs> about this, what, 30 years later? <laughs> Or something like that? Yeah. That's insane. Also, shout right. out to my fam this holiday week. I miss you guys more during the autumn months somehow. And shout out to anyone who is missing fam or who has rude ass fam and has formed a family out of friends. Sending out hugs and love to all during this wonderful and sometimes painful time of year. We can't wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, but I do want to say I'm grateful for our listeners, our family and friends, for the animals and plants and oceans, and for my love. Sorry to sneak in a second cheese. Look at you, like, twisting it and being like, oh, it's Thanksgiving week, by the way, and being so nice to our listeners. It is. So They're cool. nice to us. Gotta be nice They're back. so nice. I hope everyone is having a wonderful Thanksgiving. By the time you hear this, Thanksgiving might already be over, but just keep in mind True. that- we're thinking about you guys, and thank you guys so much. All right, guys, that is our show. Thanks so much for being here and hanging with us. Thanks for making this such a special episode for us. You really made us feel so amazing by sending us your picks and your memories. It is a dream come true. I'm telling you. We love you guys. It is a joy to be able to make the show for you every week. And friend, I want to thank you for being on this journey with me. You make this show what it is, the number one pick. Obviously, you are. <laughs> the thing that makes this show hilarious. I couldn't do this show without you. <laughs> and I love you and I appreciate you every damn day. Lily, also <laughs> miss you. You're not at home. Can't wait to see you on Thanksgiving. Everybody, like and or subscribe <laughs> to us on whatever platform you're listening on. We're on all the apps. Tell a friend. We appreciate you guys so much. Reach out to us everywhere. Instagram at That's No Class. You can send us an email or a voicemail if you want. It's okay if you don't. It's okay. Still we like still you guys. love you. <laughs> we do. That's no class at gmail.com. Call us 877 no class, or as Morgan likes to say, 877 766 2527. Call us up. We love having your stories on the show. Stay classy. Stay classy and have a great week. Bye.